Hello and welcome. I'm Sam Calliker, your guest host this week for Vision, the show where we talk all about the College of Arts and Sciences, as well as its faculty and students. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Catherine Pierce, professor in the Department of English, co-director of the Creative Writing Program, and newly appointed Poet Laureate of Mississippi. Thank you so much for being on the show again. Thank you for having me on. Yes, and it's so nice to see you. Uh, before we get into all of the great work you're doing, I was just hoping you could introduce yourself and talk about how you ended up in Mississippi State. Sure, yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm Catherine Pierce, uh, like you said, and I teach classes in creative writing and literature. I'm a poet. I joined the faculty at Mississippi State in 2007, and I've lived here ever since. So um, it's, it's I mean, it's been 15 years now almost that I've that I've been here. And so, yeah, I teach I teach the introductory creative writing classes and then I teach the upper level poetry workshops as well. And yeah, that's that's what I do. That's great. And yeah, you've been here for 15 years, just um, there working, doing great things. And recently you've had a lot of great su successes. Um, you got your second Pushcart Prize. Your new book, Danger Days, won the Mississippi Institute of Arts and Letters Poetry Award. And then recently you were named Poet Laureate of the State. So it just seems like it's been a crazy time. And I was wondering what your reaction to all of this has been. Yeah, um, it's it's been really wild, you know. It's it's been a it's been a wild year. For, I mean, it's been a wild year for everyone. I think it's been a very strange year um in a lot of ways. And so it was especially strange to have all these really good things happening against the backdrop of all these really terrible things happening with the pandemic. Um, and it's been kind of surreal in that way because there hasn't been a lot of in-person events happening. Um, so that's that's been strange. It's felt like some of these things have been happening kind of in a vacuum. But um, but no, it's it's been really, really wonderful. It's been a thrilling year, honestly, and I'm just really grateful and excited about all of this stuff, and in particular about the opportunity to be Poet Laureate for the state. I'm so excited about this role. Yes, and that's great. Just some great accomplishments. And I was hoping, you know, now that you, you've been given these um, accolades, you know, if you were to look back and maybe try to chart the path, what do you think were some major stepping stones that got you to where you are now? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I mean, I think there are the sort of more obvious stepping stones, right? I mean, the moments where I got my first poems published, which was in 2003 in the magazine Mid-American Review, or when my first book got taken, or when I got my job at Mississippi State. I mean, these are sort of the, the big touchstones. Um, but then I think, too, there are really important, much more subtle moments that have informed everything. So... And I'm sure I don't even know what they all are, but I, I know that they are things like conversations I had with teachers of mine when I was in college or when I was in grad school or just small lessons that I still think about all the time when I'm sitting down to write my own poems. Um, and then with teaching conversations that I've had with my students and questions they've asked in class that have made me think, well, yeah, what is the answer to that question and how can I consider that in my own poems and so all these all these experiences they all just kind of build and build and build right so i think it's all just been it's all been part of this this path so some are more subtle than others but i think they're all equally important that's great yeah and you know maybe in the moment it's hard hard to tell but after you've gotten these awards you know it's just so interesting to say man that moment really mattered or i, I learned so much there and you know, just always growing as as a writer. So so that's great. Um, and yeah, I mean, Poet Laureate, that's huge. I was wondering if you could maybe, for people who don't know, uh, talk about what exactly that is and maybe what some plans you have in that role. Are. Yeah, so <clears throat> Poet Laureate is an honorary position. Um, and I, I was appointed to the position by Governor Reeves after going through an interview process with um, folks at the Mississippi Arts Commission and other art organizations around the state. And um, so it's a it's a position where my role is essentially to be an ambassador for poetry in our state. And so and there's a lot of freedom for me to kind of interpret that how how I want to. And for me, what that means is and I said this when I was interviewing for the position, um, what I believe very, very strongly and I say this to my students and I say this to everyone is that poetry 
is for everybody. Poetry is not something that only some people have access to. It's not an academic pursuit. It's not, you know, it's not purely any of these things. It's it's vast and it's complex and there's a room there for all sorts of voices and approaches and styles. And it's one of the things I love so much about the art form. And so for me in the role of Poet Laureate, I wanna serve as an ambassador in our state for poetry and to help get people across the state excited about poems, especially people who might have thought that poetry wasn't for them or couldn't connect to their lives. Um, I wanna be able to get poetry into people's lives in ways that are beneficial for them and make sure everyone feels that they have real access to this. I wanna help Mississippians amplify their own poetic voices and find ways to write their own poems and get their own words out there. And I'm also very excited to work with young people and to go into schools and communities and talk to, to children across the state. I think that kids make the best poets. I mean, that's just how it is. Kids are amazing poets because they haven't they haven't yet learned all the cliches they're supposed to say, right? So everything that they're that they're describing is unfiltered and accurate and incredibly smart. And so I'm just very, very excited to work with young people. So I'll be doing all these things. I'm already talking to some different um, arts organizations across the state about different um, plans. Um, I've been talking to Tracy Carr at the Mississippi Library Commission about doing a poetry path project where we're going to have in outdoor spaces at libraries around the state, um, placards up, signs up so that people can walk around in outdoor spaces by the libraries and kind of slowly experience bits of a poem as they walk around the path. I'm writing a monthly column for the Clarion Ledger about poetry that'll give readers um, a little writing prompt so that they can you know either try their hand at writing their own poems or dive deeper into the poems they may already be writing so i'm excited to to do all of these things and i have other plans that are percolating but they're not they're not quite ready yet to to be out there sure that's exciting i love what you're saying about poetry's for everyone i think all of those you know activities you're talking about is great for that um and in one uh topic that is sort of related to that. Um, you're working on a new book project. You and Dr. Ann Fisherworth from Old Miss are co-editing a collection of essays titled A Literary Field Guide to Mississippi. And so I was wondering if you could talk about that and maybe how it connects to what you're doing as poet laureate. Absolutely. So that's something I'm really excited about. And it's still in the very early stages. We're still working on the proposal stages of that. But what we're hoping it will be is a combined literary and natural history anthology for Mississippi. So both a guide to identifying species of Mississippi, plants and animals, because Mississippi is such an incredibly rich state in terms of its biodiversity, but also a collection of poems and short prose pieces to help readers kind of get to know our state in a more personal way, a deeper way. So the anthology will include 50 different regional species, and then each one of those species will be examined through an original illustration that'll be in the book, an original poem or short story, very short story like flash fiction or a very short flash essay written by some member of Mississippi's literary community, and then a short natural history of the species written by our science editor. And so we're hoping that it'll be a really kind of exciting and dynamic way to explore the state and both its literary offerings, but also its biodiversity and its ecological offerings. Yeah, that is so fascinating. Um, just, you know, you were saying helping Mississippians find their own voice. That is sort of what it seems like is going on in that, you know, helping Mississippians learn more about their state, how to talk about it um, in all of these different ways. That is, that's so great. Um, and sort of speaking about Mississippi, you know, um, people always talk about how there are so many great writers that come out of the state. And so I was wondering what are some things about the state that you draw inspiration from in your own writing? Yeah, I think that for me, Mississippi, and this really does connect to that field guide, 
So much of the inspiration that I get from Mississippi comes from the, the natural land here. It comes from the landscape, the weather, um, the weather patterns that we get here, the flora and the fauna of the state. I am so fascinated by everything happening in our natural world here. Um, and I think that Mississippi, because of its heat, its humidity, it just grows these incredibly lush plants and, and the animals are thriving and the insects are huge and it's all so big. Um, it's so rich for writing about poetry and it's really just, it's an incredibly dynamic place in terms of experiencing the natural world. And so for me, um, my third book was called The Tornado is the World. That book deals a lot with extreme weather. Um, and that's a book that I wrote having, you know, experienced the tornado outbreak of 2011, um, which decimated so much of the South. And so that's something for me, poetry is often a place to kind of work through questions or try to kind of figure out what I'm thinking about certain things. And so having gone through that outbreak, that was a writing that book was a chance for me to kind of think about these things and process my own feelings toward the extreme weather, toward the tornadoes. Um, and toward what it means to be a member of a community, sort of experiencing all of this. Um, but, you know, on a more sort of upbeat note, there's also, I mean, I, I was telling somebody else recently that I've had to, I had to really keep an eye on myself because I keep putting crepe myrtles in my poems because I just really love crepe myrtles and they just, they're showing up a lot. So I have to kind of like limit my crepe myrtles um, because I'm just so drawn to them or, I'm working on a series of poems right now about unbeautiful creatures. Um, so I'm thinking about the creatures that, you know, people don't really want to write poems about. I know that my husband is really um, disturbed by the the land crawfish, you know, the, the, the sort of tunnel up in your yards when it rains. Um, he, he gets very creeped out by them. Um, so I had to write a poem about them because, you know, that's fascinating. Um, or about the armadillos that we have, you know, sometimes an armadillo will just run through my backyard. And I think, what? It, look at this, is this prehistoric animal? And so just sort of paying attention to the world around us. Um, and Mississippi is such an incredibly rich place that really kind of okay. rewards that attention. That's great. Yes, I think anyone who's been, spent any time in Mississippi would agree it is a beautiful place. Um, of so many different things to draw inspiration from. So that, that's so great. And I wanted to say to our listeners, the College of Arts and Sciences is hosting a reception for Dr. Pierce and her appointment to Poet Laureate. And we're trying to spread the word. So if you're interested in coming, um, it's August 24th, 2 to 4 p.m. at Lee Hall. We'll get to listen to some distinguished speakers and Dr. Pierce will read some of her work. Uh, so please be on the lookout for all of that. And Dr. Pierce, I wanted to get your thoughts on it. You know, what are you looking forward to uh, for that event? And what do you hope the audience will take away from? I'm very excited about it. I, I'm just excited for the opportunity to get to celebrate this with the Mississippi State community. You know, it's been a year where we haven't all gotten to see each other a lot. And so I'm really looking forward to just having a celebratory event with, with people in the community. Um, and what I hope people will get from it, I guess, is just again this this excitement for poetry and this this true belief that poetry is for everybody it's for all of us and it can do something for every single one of us and so it's something that i hope to kind of carry on in my work as as poet laureate that's great uh thank you so much for joining us and speaking with with me and our listeners today and thank you all for tuning in to this episode of vision and we'll see you next time mm -hmm.